The future is in eggs. Tonight, playing Jacques will be. I mean, me, Tyler Bogan. Playing Father Jacques. Larry Gutman. Playing Mother Jacques. Liz, well, yeah, no. <laughs> playing Jacqueline. Me, Jill Bolstrich. Playing Grandmother Jacques. I am Grandmother Jacques. Correct. <laughs> playing, playing Grandfather Jacques. Hello. Hello. Playing Roberta. I'm Roberta. Nice to meet you. Hey. Hi, Yana. Playing Father Robert. Chris, thank you. Hi. And playing Mother Robert. Uh, me, Heather. Who's playing Father Jacques? Gourmet <laughs> vous. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got him. You got the mother, the father Jacques, and and grand uh, mother Jacques and grandfather Jacques. Where's Ferris Jacques? Well, Jacques, uh, Jacques and Jacqueline siblings. He'd be brother Jacques then. Tom, ah. who, Tom who are you playing? Fernando. I'm in the For, second. Oh, oh, okay. Fernando. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um. So here we go. Uh, now. See you later, Bernie and Tom. Okay. This play constitutes a kind of sequel to Jacques or Obedience. As the curtain rises, Jacques and Roberta are embracing, squatting in the same position as at the end of Jacques. The change of decor is of no importance. Upstage, there is a piece of furniture, sort of a long table. The picture expresses, expressing nothing on the upstage wall is replaced in the present scene by a large frame containing a portrait of Grandfather Jacques, which is to say, Grandfather Jacques himself. There are chairs around the hatching apparatus. There is a sound of rain. Father and Mother Jacques, Father and Mother Robert, Jacqueline, Mother Jacques are standing around Jacques and Roberta, looking first at them, then at each other, shaking their heads, shrugging their shoulders and murmuring, it's a bit much. Engrossed in each other, Jacques and Roberta do not even see them. Puss! 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 They go too far. All this wasn't necessary in my day. They really do exaggerate. It all comes from Jacques, of course. Of course it's all, all Roberta's fault. Puss, 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 puss. Puss, puss. puss. Oh, they're Ooh. making a proper spectacle of themselves. Sorry, I was not I was on mute. <laughs> but Father, you only have to look at the streets and at the bus stops. Nowadays, young people don't seem to care. Roberta would never dream of making a spectacle of herself. It would never cross my son's mind. Puss, 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 puss. Uh, spectacle or no spectacle, it's the result that counts, and all this is leading nowhere. Come now, you must have a little Yes, I'm doing a reading. Be practical. Uh, you're in too much of a rush. Remember, it was the same with us. We didn't get results straight away. Puss. 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 Mm. Don't need to stick up for them. She doesn't take after them at all. I never would have stood for it. Now you calm down. Quiet. Oh, you're always being nasty, yet you're always so good. Old Mother Jacques always bleating about something. Nobody's interested in what she thinks. She ought to keep her mouth shut. What did you say? Nothing. That is, we were saying something nice about you, my dear. Puss. 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 What are they doing? I think they're rather sweet, the two of them. 
That's just what I blame them for. In the name of tradition, they've been sweet enough. They're far too sweet. It's about all they are. It's three years now since we arranged this marriage, and they've been stuck there ever since caterwauling with us watching them, and nothing happens. In spite of all our good wishes and encouragement. Nothing happens. Happens, nothing at all. We must get some results quickly. I'll say again, it's not my daughter's fault. Are you insinuating it's the fault of my son? Is that what you're insinuating? Now, don't take it like that. You must come to a decision. Come on, Jacqueline, show some initiative. Why always me? Why can't you all peeve me and peeve me and lease? Jacqueline, Jacqueline, Jacqueline. Sorry, Papa. And now they're getting on their high horses. I understand, Papa. Very well, Papa. Whatever you say, Papa. That's a good child. My little girl. She's my big consolation. Uh, she's my big consolidation. That's true enough. What a good oh, child. Yeah. Good, child. Good, good child. child. Good child. Good child. Good girl. Yeah. Let's first try and separate them so we can unite them closer afterwards. Glad up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's enough, do you hear? Enough! Now then, come on! <laughs> are, are we skipping stage directions or? You're oh. on, you're on mute. Are, are Jack and Roberta stop their purring and is awakened from a deep sleep look at Jacqueline with surprise, having difficulty in recognizing her in their sleepy state. They get up painfully, looking haggard, still in an embrace. Oh, look at her with her three noses running. Then, with great energy and some sharp taps, she frees their arms and separates them. There. Like that. Straighten yourselves up. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. You're wet through. I'm cold. Brr. I'm templing. I'm cold. Brr. I'm trembling. Serves you right. Serves you right. I'm hungry. hungry. Poor things. They don't get anything to eat in this house. All you think about is your stomach. You're neglecting production. Why don't you get on with it? After all, it is your main duty. It's your, your duty. 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 That's true, my dear. That's true, my dear. It's our duty. Duty. So, what about it? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Oh, poor darling. They're hungry. Oh, my poor little sweet, my little darling. She's good-hearted. Don't you start climbing down. The Roberts have their pride too, you know. Here you are, dears. Old Granny's potatoes and bacon. Eat up. Eat. Eat them up. Eat them up. Eat them up. Ooh, no. Aren't you hungry anymore? You need to eat something. Pussy. Yes, eat something. Puss. Like me. I'm hungry. A bit more potato. <laughs> She's got an appetite like a horse. Mm -hmm. Give him some bacon is good for the stock. A, a bit more bacon. A bit more potato. That's enough. Oh. I said enough. Yes. Grandma Jacques takes a dish and sets it down somewhere. That's through meanness rather than principles. Perhaps it's through principles as well. 
Think up your minds. From now on, production must be your constant thought. I see that I've got to bring all my authority to bear on this. You do, my dear, if you feel you want to, of course. Uh, but with care and kindness, please. We've got to the right to bring some of our authority to bear on it, too. If it doesn't work, it's not our daughter's fault. It's certainly not our daughter's fault. Just because she's our only daughter, it doesn't mean she's sterile. That's right. Don't let yourself be put upon. I would like to say that before I go on... We much must impose our authority where it is called for. I agree. Jacques, I have something very serious to say to you. They formed two groups, Jacques' parents, Grandmother Jacques and Jacqueline surround Jacques. Roberta's parents stay with Roberta, withdrawing her slightly from the others. Father Robert and Mother Robert speak to their daughter. Roberta is heard to say docilely from time to time, yes, Papa, yes, Mama, yes, Papa, yes, Mama, yes, Papa, yes, Mama. <laughs> Jacques, I have some cruel news for you. <laughs> what is it, Father? <laughs> You see your grandmother there? Don't you notice anything? No, Papa. I don't notice anything. Look harder. Make an effort. I don't see anything at all. Oh, my son. You don't understand. He's at the carefree time of life. <laughs> I'm in deep mourning. What does that mean? Yes, Papa. Yes, Mama. A son like you, who for some time now has been a comfort to me, making up his youthful follies, ought to understand. Do you understand? Understand what, Papa, Mama? Well, in a word, this is the awful truth. Haven't you ever asked yourself why you don't hear your grandfather singing any longer? Grandfather, who loved you so much, and who you adored. Or why he is up there, instead of him being here in our midst. No, I haven't asked myself that. Yes, Papa. Yes, Mama. If you've never asked yourself about it, now's the time to do so. Ask yourself. I'm asking myself. I'm looking to answer yourself. I don't answer anything. No, you're not asking yourself hard enough. Ask me. Ask what? Why don't you hear your grandfather singing anymore? Why don't I hear my grandfather singing anymore? Why? I leave it to your grandmother to tell you. Because your grandfather's dead. Grandfather is dead. Your grandfather is dead. His grandfather is dead. His grandfather is dead. Yes, Mama. Yes, Papa. Don't you understand that your grandfather is dead? <laughs> no, I don't understand that grandfather is dead. Poor child, your reflexes must have stopped working. We must get them going again. Jack falls into Jacqueline's arms, who stands him up again. For a few minutes, his face remains expressionless. The parents, the grandmother, the sister search for a sign of their son's face. They appear to be very worried. Mother Jacques says, Cry! Let yourself go, my boy, and cry! Cry! Come on, then! Suddenly, Jacques uh. starts to sob. There we are at last. That's done it. Oh, and that's done it. That's done it. That's done it. Oh, oh, poor grandfather. Again. Oh, oh, poor grandpa. Oh, my poor baby. How he's suffering. <laughs> Yes, it's, it's true. Poor Grandpa's passed away. <laughs> we must all console each other. <laughs> go and offer your condolences. We must all go. We're part of the family now. Yes, Papa. Yes, Mama. Hard 
serious condolences. Delighted. 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 Heartiest condol condolences. Heartiest condolences. Thank you very much. I'm so glad. Thank you very much. Yes, condolences. Accept them with joy. We offer our heartiest condolences. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I shan't forget. Thank you. Thank you. So nice of you. Thank you. Heartiest card. Then all, with the exception of Grandfather Jacques, surround Jacques, who is the most moved of them all. Cordolences, heartiest cordolences. Jacques? Uh, hi, hey, 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 thank you. We mustn't forget the departed. Condolences. 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 Cordolences. <laughs> uh, you've made his reflexes too sensitive. Desensitize them. Shut up, you're upsetting everybody. He's gone too far. Mother Jacques gives Jacques a powerful slap. Jacques stops weepily, weeping abruptly. There is a general movement towards Mother Jacques, except for Father Jacques. Jacqueline, Mother Robert, Father Robert, Roberta, in tone, all together. Oh, congratulations. Oh, congratulations, Madame. Madame. Warmest What's congratulations. congratulations. Bravo, Jacques. Bravo, Jacques. Bravo, 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 Mama. Bravo. Enough. It's your right and your duty to know in what circumstances your grandfather met his death. Mm. Grandfather wants to say something. He speaks much better since he died. Here comes your grandfather, fit as a fiddle, to tell you himself how he met his death. <laughs> you all passed off very well, passed away. I was in the middle of a song. Oh, you're not going to oh. start. You're not going to start singing again. You're dead. You're in mourning. No. No. No, that doesn't matter. I feel like singing. If you show no respect for your own grief, how do you expect others to? Carry on with the story, only fast. I'll sing it. You're, you're not going to sing. And I shan't say a word. Not another word. That'll be the last you see of me. Ah, there. Still as obstinate as ever. It hasn't taught him anything. Hmm. <sighs> you see how it is, my boy? We all have to go. You're our one and only hope. It's essential, absolutely essential, that we replace those that pass away. Grandfather is dead. Long live grandfather. grandfather! Grandfather is dead! Long live grandfather. grandfather! Why? We must assure the continuity of our race. Why? The continuity of our race. The white race. Long live the white race! 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 Long live the white race. The future of the white race is in your hands. It must go on, go on, and extend its power more and more. What can we do? If it's to go on, we must stop it from going back. Through what means? Through production. Whatever disappears must be replaced by new products. 
more numerous and varied than before. It's up to you to instigate production. My son, if you want me to be proud of you, try and instigate. Instigate production. My daughter is perfectly capable of it, and as I've already officially declared. We shall soon see whether these last three years are going to yield good results. Up to now, they don't seem to me uh, to have been very remarkable. Now, come on, dear. That's not very nice in front of everyone. Come with Mama. I'll teach you. All you need is a bit of training. If my experience can be of any help to you, don't hesitate to ask. With pleasure. We'd, oh, we'd be only too happy. Grandmother? Oh, I, I'll come as well. I'll, I'll sing her a lullaby. You stay here with your son-in-law. If we need you for the element, we'll call you. We'll call you, too, if we find we need some element. I'm here whenever you need me. I've got some element. I've got some in reserve if it's needed. Roberta, Mother Robert, Mother Jacques, and Grandmother Jacques leave right. Roberta exits, making gestures and assuming more and more extravagant attitudes. As he sees her leaving, Jacques makes a vague gesture with his arms towards her, pulling a grimace like a child who wants to cry, saying, mm, mm, mm. She already looks quite maternal. She's got an instinct for it. We'll soon see what you're made of. Jacques, my son, pluck up your courage. Produce something. Be a man. Come on, come on. Where's your courage? Come on, come on. Where's your courage? Get going. Get going. Start pushing. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Be a man. We've all had to go through it. Hurry up or you'll have to deal with me. Is it working over there? With it, they're getting impatient. Push. Push. It doesn't happen just like that. You can't do it to order. I don't feel any inspiration. Jacques, Roberta is ready, are you? You won't be able to say it's my daughter's fault anymore. Jacques, don't be so lazy. Just a minute. Be patient for a moment. It's coming. I feel it's going to come. Jacques, my baby, get a move on. Do. Roberta's been ready for some time. She can't go on waiting. I'm doing what I can. Uh, that's not amounting to much. <laughs> Come on, show some grit. Show some grit. Your son, it seems to me, is not worthy of my daughter. It seems to me the die is not yet cast. We'll see about that later. Do something, Grandfather. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I couldn't care less. I'm not in this world any longer. What's more, you wouldn't let me sting. That'll teach you. Serves you all right. Then keep your mouth shut. I'll keep my mouth shut if I feel like it. If I don't, I won't. Who do you think you are? What about the cult of the dead? You shut up, sir. Shut up. Well, how's it going? Hey, hey, hey. Do I have to call for order? Hey, I, oh, hey. Mama, Mama, it's happening. He's having his labor pains. Roberta, Roberta, you can let go now. I, hey, oi. Let go, my dear. You can let go now. Go, 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 go. Jacques, dear mother, our children, <laughs> Roberta's dear little mother, our own little ones. 
Now, 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 it's no time for that. Jacqueline, your brother's fainted. That's, that's it now. Bring a basket. It's been too much for him. It's too much for him. General feverish, agitated, fluttering around him. Jacqueline goes out right, carrying an empty basket as Jacques recovers consciousness. My boy, he's coming too. Where am I? At home, my dear, with your own loving parents. In your darling Roberta's own castle. Oh, I want to get away. Here are the first eggs. Oh. Bravo. Congratulations. 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 The two mothers embrace, weeping, whilst grandmother Jacques, having seized the basket of eggs, exclaims, Oh, oh, aren't they pretty? They're so sweet. What a size. I do hope they're not adult. The various characters now move in the circle grandmother Jacques. They take the basket. The scene takes place downstage. Oh, they're beautifully fresh. They must be worth 20 francs a piece. We could have them boiled. They're my daughter's very first eggs. They look just like her. Oh, no. They're the spitting image of Jacques. I don't agree. They haven't got three noses. That's because they're too small. They'll grow later. Nonsense. They look like both of them. Where's Jacqueline? She's with Roberta. Someone has to be there to help her. I feel quite moved. It's a wonderful moment. Look, these are your own eggs. Thank you. Uh, now you must hatch them out. Oh, he may be too tired at the moment. Our daughter can do her own hatching. Oh, uh, uh, in our family, it's the man's job. Come on, get up. Carry him on to the hatching table. You always let people get the better of you. You're not very smart. You're married. I'm very happy about that. Now you've got to hatch. Hatch well, my boy. Like your forefathers did. <laughs> hatch. Hatch in the name of glory and for the greatness of nations and for immortality. We must hurry. The eggs will start piling up. Bravo, oh, bravo, bravo. Oh, oh there. Oh, 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 lovely. Hey, bravo. Wonderful. I'm going to get the others. There's still a lot more. Oh, you can bring some more. There's still room. Don't worry. Bring them, bring them here. Come on, come on, don't stop. I'm hot. That's what you need, my dear, to hatch warmth and a lot of love. Production, production, production. Eggs, 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 eggs. Hatch, hatch, my son, hatch. Bravo. 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 There's more still. Tough, 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 tough. The rhythm of his tough steadily accelerates, and so do the, the Coco Co's, as well as the movement of Father Robert and Jacqueline as they dart ceaselessly to and fro, fetching and carrying egg baskets. The action is so arranged as one of them arrives, the other leaves, and vice versa. Long live production, still more production. Produce, produce. Tough, 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 tough. <laughs> Bear up, bear up. I am very hot, Mama. Tough, tough. Keep going, don't stop. Production, 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 production. Production, production, production. Production, production, production. I keep thinking tough, of tough, the tough, future tough. of all these children. What are we going to make of the offspring? Sausage meat. Cannon fodder. Oh, we'll, we'll need some for omelets. Some can be athletes. We'll keep some back for reproduction. 
and for modeling paste. And pastry paste. We'll make officers, officials, and officious people. And we'll put some aside to eat ourselves. Ballets and masters. Diplomats. Knitting wool. Leeks and onions. Bankers and pigs. Citizens and country yokels. Employers and employees. Popes, kings and emperor, emperors. Policemen. Solicitors and parsons. Omelettes, lots of omelettes. <laughs> humanitarians and anti-humanitarians. Yes, 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 yes. Production, uh, production, production, production. production. <laughs> opportunities. Uh, sorry, opportunities. <laughs> Internationalists. Radishes, radicals. Anti-revolutionaries. Householders. Proletarians. Uh, sorry. Householders. House breakers. Chemists. Firemen, teachers. Jansenists. Free thinkers. Marxists. Marquis, Marx, and countermarks. Idealists, relativists. Existentialists. Essentialists and materialists. Federalists and spiritualists. Intellectuals. Brothers. Half-brothers. Friends and enemies. Army cooks. Customs officials. Actors. Drunkards and Catholics. Protestants and Israelites. Stairs and shoes. Pencils and penholders. Aspirins. Matches. And omelets, lots of omelets. Yes, yes, yes omelets. Yes. Yes. Omelets, lots of omelets. Omelets. And pessimists. <gasps> what? Oh, oh, he. What's the matter with him? Oh, no, 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 no. It's never it's 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 Anarchists and the nihilists. I oh. said we could never rely on him. Have you lost your faith? He hasn't got any faith. Then what is it you want? Then say what it is you want. I want a fountain of light, incandescent water, fire of ice, snows of fire. Don't forget your obligations. Look after your eggs. You can always go to the firework displays. He's certainly got some big ideas. Why not go to the Chateau de Mardet? Production. 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 Let's produce. Let's produce. Let's produce. As it was in the past, the future lies in eggs. A trapdoor may open, and perhaps the stage may or may not slowly collapse and the characters, all unwittingly, gently sink and disappear without interrupting their actions, or just quite simply carry on, according to the technical facilities available. A curtain. Wow. <laughs> that was so massive. Oh, wait, let me go to this. Tonight, playing Micuccio Bonavino will be... I'm playing with what? <laughs> Micuccio Bonavino. <laughs> uh, me, Bernard Bossio. Playing Marta Marnis. Liz. <laughs> Playing Sina Marnis. Will be Clarissa. Oh, I brought up mute myself. Me. <laughs> Playing Ferdinando. Ferdinando. Okay. And playing Dorina. Hello. Yay. So if I lie. have any like if I have any like weird noise kind of lines, I need Tyler to come back and help me with that. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> Plenty of noises ready. Stick around in case I need you. <laughs> you got it. Oh, uh Sicilian lines. <clears throat> a hallway furnished simply with a small table and several chairs. The corner to the left of the actors is hidden from the corner to the left of the actors is hidden from view by a curtain. There are doors at the right and left. At the rear, the main door of glass is open and leads to a dark room across 
which may be seen as a decorated door, likewise of glass, which affords a view of a splendidly illuminated salon. The view includes a table sumptuously spread. Night, the hallway is in darkness. Someone is snoring beyond the curtain. Shortly after the rise of the stage curtain, Ferdinando enters through the door at the right with a light in his hand. He is in short sleeves, but has only to put on his dress coat and he will be ready to serve at the table. He is followed by Micuccio, evidently just from the country with his overcoat collar raised to his ears, a grimy bag in one hand and in the other an old valise and the case of a musical instrument. He is so cold and exhausted that he can barely manage his burden. No sooner has the light been brought in than the snoring behind the curtain ceases. Who is it? Hey, Dorina, wake up. Can't you see that we have Signor Bonsavino here? Yeah, my name's Bonvivino. Oh, Bonavino. Bonavino. Bonavino, Bonavino, huh? And who's he? A relation of Madame's. And just how may you be related to Madame, please? Cousin, maybe? Uh, well, really, there's uh, no relationship. I am. Uh, uh, my name's Micuccio Bonavino. You, you know that. A relative of Madame's. Man, can't you hear? Countrymen of hers. Then why did you ask me if the Amato was here? On the I took him for a relative, a nephew. I can't receive you, my dear fellow. Ah. Oh, what? You can't receive me? Oh, I have come all the way from the country on purpose. On purpose? What for? To find her. <laughs> She's not here. I told you, she can't be found at this hour. Right, and if the train travel, the train just came in, uh, what can I do about it? I've been traveling for two days. And you look it. Ah, I do, eh? Very much. How do I look? Uh, ugly, my dear fellow. No offense. Can't receive you. Call again tomorrow. You'll find her. The madam is at the theater now. What do you mean, call again? Must I go? Where? I, I don't know where to go in this town. At night, I'm a stranger. If she's not here, I'll wait for her. Uh, really, now, I, I can't I wait for her here? I said no, without her permission. What permission? You don't know me. That's just it, because I don't know you. I'm not going to get a bowling out on account of you. Rest easy, huh? Indeed, she'll be just in the proper mood to attend to him this evening. Can't you see? There's a party on tonight. So? Oh, what party? An evening in her honor. And we'll get through, God willing, by daybreak. I'm all right, no matter. I'm sure that the moment Teresina sees me... Understand? He calls it Teresina, he does. Plain Teresina. He asked me whether Teresina the singer was in. Oh, well, what of it? Isn't she a singer? Uh, that's what I, they call it. Are you trying to teach me? Then, then you know, really know her well. You know her well. Well, well why... Uh, we grew up together. Huh? What shall we do? Let him wait. Of course I'll wait. What do you mean? I came on purpose to. Take a seat there. I wash my hands of it. I must get things ready. Uh, this is fine indeed. As if I were... Uh, perhaps because they see me in this condition. Uh, I, if I were to tell Teresina when she returns from the theater, oh, whose house is this? Ours, as long as we stay. So then things are going well. Huh? Uh, is it a large house? So so. And uh, that's a salon. A reception hall. Tonight there's a banquet here. Ah, what a spread. What bright lights. Beautiful, isn't it? Then it's true. What? 
Uh, it's easily seen. They're well. In good health? No, I, I mean well off, right? You know. Why? Do you know who Sina Marnis is? Sina? Ah, yes, yes. Oh, now I understand. Zia Martha wrote to me about it. Teresina, certainly. Teresina. Sina? Huh? <laughs> Wait a moment. Now that I think of it, you, do you know who he is? The fellow that she's always writing to, the mother. Well, she can write to the poor little thing. Yes, yes, Bonavino, but Domenico. Your name's Domenico, isn't it? Uh, Domenico or Micuccio, it's the same thing. We, uh, we call it Micuccio, where I come from. You're the fellow that was so sick, aren't you, recently? Oh, terribly, yes, at death's door. Dead. Practically dead. And Signora Marta sent you a money order, didn't she? We went to the post office together. A money order. A money order. Yeah. And that's what I've come for. I have it here. The money. Are you returning it to her? Money or nothing. It's not to be mentioned. But first, will they be much longer in coming? Oh, about sometime tonight, I imagine. Oh, bravo, bravo, miss, miss, miss. A great voice, huh? I should say so, a voice. I can take credit for that. It's my work. Huh? Her voice? <laughs> I discovered it. What, you? Do you hear? He discovered her voice. <laughs> I am a musician. I am. Ah, a musician. Bravo! And what do you play? Uh, the trumpet? Uh, no, no. Uh, who said the trumpet? The piccolo. I belong to the band I do. I, I belong to our communal band up at my place. And what's the name of your place? Wait, I'll recall it. Palma Monte Chiaro. Monte Chiaro. Uh, what else should it be named? And it was it really you who discovered her voice? Come now, my boy. Tell us how you did it, Sonny. <clears throat> Wait. Listen to this, Ferdandino. Oh, I did it? Oh, I, she used to sing. And at once you being a musician, eh? No, not at once. On the other hand... It took you some time. Uh, she always used to be singing, uh, sometimes out of peak. Really? And then again, to, uh, to get the certain thoughts out of her mind, because... Uh, Oh, uh, certain uh, unpleasant things, uh, disappointments, uh, poor little girl. In, in those days, her uh, father had died. I, uh, yes, I, I helped her out a bit. Uh, her, her mother and her mother, Zia Marta, but my mother was against it. And in short... You were fond of her then? Oh, I? Of Teresina? <laughs> you make me laugh. Uh, my mother insisted on giving her up because she didn't have anything. Had lost her father while I, come good or evil, had my position in the bank. So you're not related at all, then? Uh, lovers, maybe? Oh, my parents were against it. And that's why Teresina sang out of spite. Ah, just listen to that. And you? Ah, uh, it was a heaven. <laughs> I can truly say, an inspiration from a heaven. Nobody had ever noticed it, not, not even I. All of a sudden, uh, one morning... Oh, that's uh, luck for you. 
I'll never forget it. It was the morning in April. She was at the window singing up in the garret, you know, beneath the roof. Oh, understand? Hush! What's wrong about that, huh? The, the humblest folk can have the greatest of gifts. Of course they can. As you were saying, she was at the window singing. I had heard her sing that little, little air of ours, surely, uh, I a hundred thousand times. Little air? Yes. Uh, all things in this world below. That's the name of it. Uh, all things in this world below. All the things in this world below live their day and then depart. But this one that pricks my heart, a darling mine, will never go. Huh? Oh, and what a melody. Uh, divine, impassioned, uh, uh, enough of that. I had never paid any attention to it that morning. It was as if I were in a paradise. An angel, it seemed that an angel was singing that day after dinner ever so quietly without letting her know or her mother know a thing about it. I took up into the garret the leader of our band, who's a friend of mine, uh, a very close friend for that matter, Salo Malvati. <laughs> Such a kind-hearted chap, that poor fellow. Uh, he is a, uh, he's a clever boy, a great leader. So he's, so they, they all say at Palma, and he says, why, this is a God-given voice. Imagine our joy. I hired a piano, and before it was got up into the attic, well, and then I bought the music. And right away, the leader began to give her lessons. Just like that, satisfied with whatever they could give from time to time. What was I? Same as I am today, a poor, humble fellow. The piano cost the money, the music cost the money, and then there was seen that I had to eat decent food, eh? Yeah, of course. So that she's had the strength to sing. Meat, every day, and I can take credit for that. The, the deuce, you say? And so? And so she began to learn. You could see it all from the beginning. It, it was written in above, in heaven, you might say. And it was heard throughout the whole country. That great voice of hers. The people would come from all around and stand beneath the window in the street to hear her. Ah, oh, and what a spirit. She burned. She really was a fire. And when she would finish singing, She'd grasp me by the arm, just like this, and would shake me, just like a mad woman, for she already foresaw. She knew that fame was hers. The leader told us so, and she didn't know how to show me her gratefulness. Zia Marta, on the other hand, poor woman that she was, was against her career. I wouldn't say that she was against it. She didn't believe it. That's what it, that was it. Uh, the poor old lady, she had so many odd knocks in her life that she didn't want it, Asina, to take it into her head to rise above the position to which she had been so long resigned. Mm. She was, in plain words, afraid. And then she knew what it cost to me. And that my parents, uh, but I, I broke with them all, with my father, with my mother. When a certain teacher came from outside, he used to give concerts. Uh, I, I can't remember his name now. But he had a final reputation. When this master heard that Teresina and said that it would be a sin, a real sin, not to have her continue her studies in a city, in a great conservatory. I broke with them all. I sold the farm that had been left to me by an uncle of mine, a priest, and sent Teresina to Naples. You? Yes, I. I. 
at his expense, don't you understand? I kept her there for four years, a stardian. I have not seen her ever since. Never? Never, because uh, because she used to sing in the theaters, you see, here and there. She'd fly from Naples to Rome, and from Rome to Milan, and then to Spain, and then to Russia, and then back again. Cosimo Fiora everywhere. Yeah, I know all about it. I've got them all here in the valise, all the papers, and in there. I have all the letters, hers and her mother's. Here you are. These are the words when she sent me the money at that time. I was on the point of death. Dear Mercuccio, I haven't time to write you. I confirm everything that Mama said. Get better at once, become your old self again, and wish me well, Teresina. And did she send you much? A thousand lire, wasn't it? Yeah, that was it, a thousand. And that farm of yours, if I may ask, uh, that you sold, how much was it worth? Uh, how much should it be worth? Uh, not much, it was a mere, mere strip of land. Uh -huh. But uh, I have the money right here, I have. I don't want anything at all. What little I've done, I've done for her sake. We had agreed to wait two or three years so as to let her make a place for herself. Zia Marta kept writing that uh, to, to me all the time in her letters. I speak the plain truth. I, I wasn't waiting for the money. So many years had passed, I could wait a little longer. But seeing that Teresina was, has sent it to me, it's a sign she has enough and to spare. She's made a place for herself. I should say, <laughs> what a place, my dear sir. Then it's time. To marry? I am here. How, how, have you come to marry Sinamania? Hush! That's their agreement. Can't you understand, Denny? To marry her. Mm. I'm not saying anything. I simply say I am here. I have abandoned everything and everybody yonder in the country. Family, land, band, everything. I went to law against my parents on account of those thousand lira, which came unknown to me at the time I was more dead than alive. I had to tear it out of my mother's hands, for she wanted to keep it. Ah, no, sir, it's not, it isn't the money. Micuccio Bonavino, money, not at all. Wherever I may happen to be, even at the end of the world, I won't starve. I have my art. I have my piccolo, and... You have? Did you bring along your piccolo too? Sure I did. We, we're as one person, my piccolo and I. Uh, she sings and he plays. Capish? Ah. Uh, don't you think I can play in the orchestra? <laughs> Certainly. Why not? And I'll bet you play well. So, so uh, I've been playing for 10 years. Would you mind letting us hear something? Yes. Yes, bravo, bravo, let's hear something. Oh, no, what would you want at, at this hour? Anything at all, please, now. Some little air. Oh, no, no, really. Uh, don't make us hoax you. <laughs> here, here you are. Come now, let's hear something. But really, it's impossible. Like this alone. No matter, come on, make a try. If you don't, I'll play the thing. <laughs> for me, if you wish. Shall I play for you the air that Teresina sang that day up in the garret? Yes, yes! Bravo, bravo! 
All things in the world below. All things in the world below. Mikuchio sits down and begins to play all in seriousness. Ferdinando and Dorina do their best to keep from bursting into laughter. The other waiter in dress coat comes in to listen, followed by the cook and the scullion. Ferdinando and Dorina caution them by signs to listen quietly and earnestly. Mikuchio is playing, playing is suddenly interrupted by a loud ringing of the bell. Oh, here's Madame. Be off now. Open the door. And you clear out. She said she wanted to have dinner served as soon as she came back. Uh, my, my dress coat. Where, where did I put it? There. Mikucho arises, his instrument in his hands, abashed. Ferdinando finds his coat, puts it on hurriedly. Then seeing that Mercutio was about to follow Dorina, stops in rudely. You stay here. I must first let Madame know. In there, Dorina. In the living, in the drawing room. Fernando, Dorina, and the other waiter enter from the door and cross the stage toward the salon in the background, carrying magnificent baskets of flowers, wreaths, and so on. Mercutio sticks his head forward to get a look into the salon and catch a sight of a large number of gentlemen, all in evening dress, conversing confusedly. Dorina returns in a great hurry, hastening to the door at the right. Who are they? The guests! Mikuchio stares again. His vision becomes clouded. His stupefaction and his commotion are so great that he himself does not realize that his eyes are moist with tears. He closes them, pulls himself together, as if to resist the torture inflicted upon him by a shrill outburst of laughter. It is seen Marnus in the salon. Dorina returns with two more baskets of flowers. What are you crying about? I, no, all those people. And to Zia Marta from the door at the right, the poor old lady is oppressed by a hat and a costly splendid velvet cloak. As soon as she sees Mucuccio, she utters a cry that is at once suppressed. What? Mercutio, you here? Zia Marta, good Lord, like this, you? Why, what's wrong with me? With a hat, you? Ah, uh, but how on earth did you come? Without a word of warning, how did it happen? I, I came... And this evening of all others, oh heavens, wait. What shall I do? What shall I do? Do you see how many people we have here, my son? Tonight is a party in honor of Teresina. I know. Her a special evening, understand? Wait. Just wait here a minute. If you, if you think that it would be best for me to go, No, I, no, no. Wait a moment, I say. I wouldn't know where to go in, in this strangest city. Ziamata returns and signals him with her gloved hand to wait. She enters the salon and suddenly there is a deep silence. There is heard clearly these words of Sina Marnus. A moment, my friends. Mercutio again hides his face in his hands, but Sina does not come. Instead, Zia Marta enters shortly afterward without her hat, without her gloves, without her cloak, now less burdened. Here I am, here I am. And, uh, and Teresina? I've told her, I've brought her the news, and soon as, uh, as, as soon as she can get a moment you'll come. In the meantime, we'll stay here a little while, eh? Are you satisfied? Uh, as far as I'm concerned. I'll keep you company. Oh, no, if, uh, if you'd rather, that, that is, uh, if, if you're needed there. Not at all. They're having supper now, see? Admirers of her, the impresario. Her career, you understand. We too will stay here. Dorina will prepare this little table for us right away and and we'll have supper together. Just you and I here, huh? What do you say? We two, all alone, eh? We'll recall the good old times. Come on, Dorina, lively now. For me and for this dear boy of mine, my dear Mercutio, I can't believe that we're together again. Here, in the meantime, please be seated. Yes, yes, yes. Here, like this, apart from the others, we two alone. 
in, in there, you understand, so many people. She, poor thing, can't very well leave them. Her career. What, what else can she do? Have you seen the papers? Wonderful happenings in my boy. As for me, <laughs> I'm all in a whirl. It seems impossible that I should be sitting here alone with you tonight. Uh, and she'll come. She told you she'll come. I mean, just to get her a look at her, at least. Of course she'll come, as soon as she can find a moment to spare. Didn't I tell you so? Why, just imagine what pleasure it would be for her to be here with us, with you, after such a long time. How many years is it? So many, so many. Ah, my dear boy, it seems an eternity to me. How many things I've been through, things that, that hardly seem true when I think of them. Who could have imagined when, when, when we were yonder in Palma, when you used to come up into our garret with its swallowed nests in the rafters, remember? They used to fly all over the house and my beautiful pots of basil on the water sill, window sill. And Donna Anunza, Donna Anunza, our little, our old neighbor. Um, God bless. Dead. Yes, yeah. I imagine so. She was a pretty old lady even then, older than I am. Poor Donna Anunza with her clown of garlic, uh, cl uh, with her clove of garlic. Do you remember? She always came with that pretext, a clove of garlic, just when we were about to send her down a bite. And, oh, that poor lady. Who knows how many more have passed on her eh? at Palma. Ah, at least they rest yonder in their last sleep in our churchyard with, with their beloved ones and relatives, while I, who knows when I'll leave these bones of mine. <laughs> Enough of that. Away with, with, with such thoughts. Ah, here's Dorina. Looks at Dorina, then at Zia Marta, confused, perplexed. He raises his hand to help himself, sees that they are grimy from the journey, and lowers them, more confused than ever. Here, over here, Dorina. I I'll serve him. Leave it to me. There, there. That's fine, isn't it? Oh, yes. Thanks. Here, yeah, here you are. Um. Um. Mm, mm, mm. Good, good stuff. A special honor evening. Understand to it now? L let's see. But first, um, here I can do it in your company. Oh, bravo, my boy. You too. Bravo, my Mercutio. The same as ever, poor fellow. Believe me, when I have to eat in there without being able to cross myself, it seems to me that the food can't go down. Eat, eat, manji, manji. No, I am good and hungry. I am. I, uh, I haven't eaten for, for, two, for two days. What do you mean? On the trip? I took plenty to eat along with me. I, I have it there in the valise, but... Uh, About the what? I, I was ashamed. It, it seemed so late. Oh, how silly. Come now. Eat, my poor Mercutio. You certainly must be famished. Two days and drink. Here, 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 drink. Thanks. Yes, I'll have some. From time to time, as the two waiters enter the salon in the background, I'll leave it with the with the courses opening the door. There comes from inside a wave of confused words and outbursts of laughter. Lucuccio raises his head from his plate, disturbed, and looks into the sorrowful, affectionate eyes of Zia Martha, as if to read it and read in them an explanation of it all. They're laughing. Yes. Uh, drink a drink. Ah. That's a good old wine of ours, Mercutio. If you only knew how I long for it. The wine Michaela used to make. Michaela, who, who lived under us. What's become of Michaela, my son? Uh, Michaela, she's fine. She's fine. And her daughter, Luza. She's married. Has two children already. Is that so? Really? She's always come up to us. Remember? Such a happy nature, too. Oh, Lutza. And to think of it, just to think of it, married her. And whom did she marry? Dr. Likasi, the fellow who, that worked in the, the customs house. You remember him? Him? Fine. And Donna Margie, Margie and, and Angela is a grandmother. A grandmother already. Fortunate woman. Two children, did you, did you say? 
cool, yes. Uh, Aunt, are you drinking? Oh, yes, yes, so right away. Oh, well, don't mind them. They're laughing naturally. There's so many of them there, my, my dear boy. That's a life. What can a person do? Her career, it's the impresario. Here, Dorina, uh, let me have your plate, Mercutio. You like this. Tell me how much you want. That's you, please. Here you are. Oh, how well you've learned. You make my eyes bow you with astonishment. I had to, my boy. When I saw you come out, come in with that velvet cloak on your back and, and that hat on your head. Necessity, my son. I understand. Hey, you must keep up appearances. But if they saw you dressed like that in Palma, ah. see a Martha. <laughs> oh, good heavens. Don't mention it. Believe me, whenever I think of it, shame, shame overwhelms me. I look at myself. I say, is it the real I? So bedizened and, and, and it seems that it's all a make-believe as in the carnival season. But what's a person to do? Necessity, my son. Yeah, of course, certainly. Uh, once you get into that life, but she's really way up in the world, eh? <laughs> you can see that really way up. Uh, they, they pay her well, eh? Oh, yes, very well. Uh, how much uh, per performance? That depends. According to the season and the theater, you see. But let me tell you, my boy, it costs money. Ah, uh, how much it costs, this life we lead. It takes all the money we can get. If you only knew that enormous expenses, it all goes out as fast as it comes in. Clothes, or jewels, expenses as of every sort. A loud outburst of voices in the salon at the rear cuts her short. Where, where, where? We want to know where. A moment, I tell you, only a moment. <laughs> there, that's she. Here she comes. She comes hastening in, rustling with silk, sparkling with gems, her shoulders, bosoms, and arms bare. It seems as if the hallway has suddenly been flooded with light. Mikuchio, who has just stretched his hand outward toward the wine glass, sits transfixed, his face flaming, his eyes distended, his mouth agape, dazzled and stupefied, as if he is in the presence of a vision. He stammers. Teresina. Mikuchio? Where are you? Ah. Uh. There he is. Oh, how are things? Are you all better now? Fine, fine. You were so sick, weren't you? Oh, I'll see you again soon. Mama will stay with you in the meantime. Agreed, eh? See you later. Mikuchio stands amazed while the reappearance of Sina in the salon is greeted with loud shouts. Aren't you uh, eating? Eat, eat, eat. <laughs> Eat? Oh, what she's come to. It it doesn't seem true. All in that style. Uh, a dream. Her voice. Her eyes. It's no longer she to the scene. Uh, oh, fie. No use thinking about it. Huh? It's all over. Who knows how long a time. And I, fool that I was, stupid. When they told me so back in the country, and I broke my bones to get here, 36 hours on that train, all for the sake of making a laughing stock of myself. For that waiter and that maid there, Dor Dorina, uh, how they laughed. I, and, uh, um, well, what else was I to believe? I came because you, um, Teresina, had, had promised me. But perhaps, yes, that's it. How was she herself to imagine that the one fine day she'd be where she is now, while I, yonder, stayed behind with my piccolo in the town square? She's making such strides. Lord! No use thinking of that. If I have done anything for her, nobody's here, Martha. Must 
suspect that I have come to to stay. Oh, wait. I came just for this, to give you back the money you sent to me. Do you want to call it a payment, a restitution? What's the, the difference? I see that Teresina has become a, a, a queen. I see that and nothing. Let's drop it. But, but this money, no. I didn't deserve that from you. What's the use? It's all old, so let's forget it. Huh? But money, no. Money to me, nothing doing. I'm only sorry that the amount isn't complete. What are you saying, my boy? What are you saying? It wasn't I who spent it. My parents spent it while I was sick, without my knowledge. But let me make up the, for the tiny amount I, I spent for her in the early days. Do you remember? It, it's a small matter. Let's forget it. Uh, here's the rest. And uh, I, I'm going. Oh, what do you mean? So suddenly. Wait at least until I can tell Teresina. Didn't you hear her say that she wanted to come back? I'll go right away and tell her. No, no, it's useless. Uh, understand. Let her stay there. She's in her element where she belongs. <laughs> Poor me. <laughs> I've seen her. That was enough. Or, or rather, you, you better go there. Do you hear them laughing? I don't want them to laugh at me. I, I'm gone. But I... It's impossible for me to keep watch over her anymore, my dear boy. Why? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Go, my boy, go. Uh, she, she is no longer fit for you. You're right. If you had only taken my advice. Then, uh, then she, she is no longer worthy of me? For mercy's sake, for mercy's sake, for pity of me, Mercutio, mine. Enough, enough. I'm going just the same. I, I'm all the more determined now. What a fool I was, Zia Marta, not to have understood. All for this, all, all naked. Don't cry. What's to be done about it? It's luck, luck. As he speaks, he takes his valise and the little bag and starts to leave. It suddenly occurs to him that outside of the little bag, there's a beautiful limes that he had brought from Sicily for Teresina. Oh, look, uh, Marta, Zia Marta, uh, look here. Limes uh, are beautiful limes. I had brought them for her. Uh, suppose I were to start throwing them at the heads of all of those fine gentlemen in oh, there. Oh, for mercy's sake. <laughs> no, nothing. Don't be afraid. I, I leave them for you alone, Zia Marta. And tell them I paid the duty on them, too. Enough. They're for you only. Remember that. And as to her, simply say for me, the best of luck to you. He leaves. The chorus continues. Zia Marta is left weeping alone before the table, her face buried in her hands. A long pause until Sina Marnus takes it into her head to make another fleeting appearance in the hallway. Has he gone? Oh, the poor fellow. Look, he had brought you some limes. How beautiful! Just see. How many? What fragrance? How beautiful, beautiful! Didi, Didi, Rosie, yeah, hey, Corneli, Torelli, Didi. No, 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 not there. I say no, no, not there. Let me do as I please. Here, Didi, Sicilian limes. Here's some for you, Rosie. Sicilian limes, Sicilian limes. Curtain. Yay! Yay! Yay. <laughs> poor Mercutio. Oh, poor guy. Poor wow. And he brought it. I don't know. There was something shady about him. <laughs> <laughs> the piccolo, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> That piccolo, does he really play the piccolo? Yeah. Ne never never trust a guy who says he plays the piccolo. <laughs> really? What about a girl who plays the piccolo? <laughs> oh, well, that's different. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I thought it was the lines that made him weird. <laughs> I think yeah, now there's, there's yeah. a, a note. The new version... 1920 oh, yeah. has a different ending. Cena, <laughs> instead of gaily distributing the limes to her guests, stands in tears before her former sweetheart, who, repudiating her remorse, thrusts the money into her bosom and leaves. Huh? Oh, I like that. <laughs> Woo! I like that one. Or thrust, he can thrust the limes into her bosom. <laughs> and then she goes out and, and offers the yeah. other gentleman limes. And then you could have uh, a gin a gin a gin and tonic. Oh, yeah. <laughs>